everybody, it's Amy from Winterwood Studio and today we're going to talk about the eight ways that I deal with artist block when I'm having trouble creating. I thought maybe I might have a way of dealing with it that could be helpful to one of you out there. So grab something yummy or cold or hot to drink depending on where you are and come on in and let's chat for a little bit. Okay, so there are eight main ways that I deal with artist block and I thought I would just go through them and tell you what I do and maybe they might help some of you out there. So the first thing that I, that I do, and this is probably the easiest, is if I'm working on a piece and I'm feeling confused or like I suddenly don't want to work on it or if something's not going right, the first thing that I will do will be to go and do something mindless. So. I will walk away from the easel or the drawing table and I will go do some dishes or vacuum or walk the dog or take a shower or match up my socks. <laughs> Just something mindless that I can do repetitively. It helps if it's with my hands or if I'm moving my body like walking or exercising. Yoga is good um, if you do yoga. Um, but I like to go and just do that for, you know, it can be a short break from 10 minutes up to like an hour, however long you need. Sometimes I think our brains just get fatigued and we just need to take a break for a minute. So sometimes what looks like a sudden artist block, especially if it's in the middle of a piece, might actually be fatigue. Um, so I would just take a break and go do something else for a little bit. That brings me to something else that I didn't write down. So this is like a bonus one, but also if you're tired, go to bed early that night. And if you're not drinking enough water, drink a lot of water. <laughs> if you're tired, your brain and your creativity, they're not gonna function the way that they should. Uh, you're gonna be sluggish. So <laughs> make sure you get enough sleep, take care of your body, eat the right food, drink lots of water, stay hydrated. That's not even one of my eight ways. So that's an extra for you. That's a bonus nine right at the beginning. So that is the first thing to do and the easiest thing to do and that is just to go and do something else for a little bit. Okay, so that's that was number one and that was for when you're stuck like in the middle of a project. The rest of these ways are more like if you're getting having trouble getting started on a project in the first place. Um, and that's more what I would consider like real artist block. Um, so the rest of these are for that when you what happens if you don't feel like creating art at all or you just can't get going or you can't find interest or a spark in anything um so way number two for me um something i find really inspiring is flipping through art magazines or an art book um i specifically like art magazines i keep them in here in my studio and these are some of the ones some of my most recent ones that um have just come they, especially like the pastel journal, the watercolor artist and colored pencil magazine, not only do they interview artists and show lots of great art pieces, but they often will have articles discussing specific techniques or ways artists have of working. Um, and I just find it really inspiring. I can remember a very specific time when I was having a lot of trouble getting going and I just didn't know what to do and it had been like two weeks since I had created something and I flipped through Watercolor Magazine and they were interviewing a, a watercolor artist and she talked about just pouring her watercolor paints onto her watercolor paper and like different things she did to get different textures and I just thought that sounded like so much fun and the very next day I, I went and started a piece by doing that. So that broke um, a spell of artist block that was I think two or three weeks long. Um, so that is, I always try to have like unread art magazines around because I find them very inspiring and helpful when I am feeling blocked. So that is way number two. So way number three is to switch mediums for a while. If you follow me here on YouTube, you know I work in lots of different mediums, like pretty much all of them. <laughs> No, that's not true, but I do work in lots of mediums. Uh, and the reason for that is I get bored easily. I think if I picked just one medium and only worked in that medium, I don't think I'd be an artist for long. <laughs> I need um, spontaneity and newness and excitement. And I'm not saying you have to go out and buy a new supply. If you're like me, you have more than one medium lying around your house. So if you've been working in 
watercolor and colored pencil for a while like I have been. I've worked in watercolor and colored pencil almost this whole summer and this week I started to feel like I really didn't want to do another watercolor and colored pencil piece and I was dragging my feet and I know that's a sign that it's time to switch. I just realized I was doing the Mr. Burns fingers. <laughs> Mr. Burns <laughs> from The Simpsons. For anybody <laughs> who doesn't watch The Simpsons, the evil. <laughs> I'm not evil, I promise. Okay, uh, yeah, so it's time for me to switch mediums. So, and oh, and actually I have my pastels out here because I just finished a pastel piece this weekend. I switched to pastels and I'm getting ready to get my oil paints out because also, as you know, if you follow me, I'm planning to try to figure out a way to paint oil paint in the house in the winter with no toxic fumes or anything. And it's starting to get closer to fall, so I better get on that. So what, what perfect time to change mediums. I'm tired of what I was doing. It's time to move on for a while. And that doesn't mean I won't come back to watercolor and colored pencil. I'm sure I will. Um, it might be as soon as a month from now. I just am going to switch mediums for a little bit and I instantly feel more inspired and ready to get to work. Way number four to break artist block. This might not be a problem for you, but it can be for me. So way number four is to give yourself permission to create something that you will not, will not in all caps, post on social media. For me, a lot of the times I can get really wrapped up in the whole social media. What do they think? Is this going to turn out bad? I have to post this. And then I get all wrapped up in my head and I don't want to work on my art. So one of the ways that I can break that is before I start, I know that this is going to piece, be a piece that is not going to go on social media. And that gives me permission to play or try new techniques or a new style or do something different. And it doesn't matter because I'm not going to post it. If nobody else ever sees it, that's fine. It's just for me. And I think that's really important, especially in this highly connected world we live in. You know, I'm absolutely positive that, you know, Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, they weren't showing everything they did to hundreds and thousands of people every time they made something. Uh, and I think it puts a lot of weird pressure on us now as artists to constantly churn out stuff and constantly be posting and it's not healthy. And at some point you have to ask yourself, which is more important, my mental health and my art or staying consistent on social media? <laughs> and it's, it's, yeah, it's difficult to make that decision, but I, I think if, you know, you look at it clearly, there's really only one answer. So every now and then, give yourself to create something, give yourself permission to create something that will never see the light of day on social media if you don't want it to. Number five is to try an art supply that you haven't tried before. Um, and that probably involves purchasing something, but it doesn't have to be super expensive. Um, I just got a, a pack of the uh, Faber-Castell watercolor pencils, and it was like the smallest pack that they had. I think it's six colors, and I think it was like 10 bucks. Give yourself a supply as a gift that you haven't tried before. Get out some paper, just swatch it, it doesn't have to be expensive. It can be expensive if you want. It could be as simple as just buying a new tube of paint in a color you haven't tried before and swatching it in your sketchbook. Just that physicality of trying something new, something you haven't done before, something that gets you out of your comfort zone, I often find will be enough to spark that creative passion again when you feel like it's lost. Just try something new. And that goes for a new style as well. If you're feeling really stuck in the style you have, Try a new style. That's not one of my numbers on my list, but you can do that too. If you're always doing really hyper-realistic paintings, give yourself permission to just slosh some supplies on a piece of paper and see what happens. Uh, if you always work in a really stylized, like, anime type with, you know, really clean line work, try creating something without line work. Just put yourself out there. Do something a little different from what you've used, you're used to doing. Um, again, it's about stimulating your brain pathways and new thought processes and it's just about getting excited again, really. I think a lot of, you know, the artist block is because we're bored or worn out or just feeling blah and it's about finding that creative passion again, really, I think. <laughs> Okay, so way number six is to create in a different space from where you normally create. 
So if I'm always in my studio, maybe I go outside for a while. If I'm always working at my kitchen table, maybe I go out onto my deck or patio. If I'm always in my house, maybe I go to a coffee shop with a sketchbook and some colored pencils. Just get out of your normal routine and your normal space and go somewhere else. Just that little change will often be enough to rattle things up enough and change things up enough that you're excited about creating again. Okay, we're down to the last two, number seven and eight, and these two might be a little controversial. <laughs> we'll see what people think. Uh, but number seven is, if you are having really bad artist block, give yourself permission to take a break. This may not work for everybody, and I'm saying that right now. Sometimes this is the exact opposite of what you need, but you need to be really honest with yourself and say to yourself, Am I super burned out? Have I been pushing myself really, really, really hard? Have I been finding enjoyment in life in the other things I enjoy? Have I been socializing? Have I been doing my other hobbies? If you've been so wrapped up in, in your art or your work for so long that all those other things have fallen by the wayside and now you're feeling like you can't even go near your easel, you were probably working yourself too hard and you may need a vacation from your art. You may need to take a week or two and read some good books, watch some movies, hang out with your friends, go out to eat, uh, go to a museum, go on an actual vacation, like to a nice tropical beach somewhere. But we forget that we're not machines. We can't just constantly keep pushing ourselves through and through and through and through because eventually there's going to be a breaking point and you're not going to like what happens when you reach that point. So if you're anywhere near that point, it may be time to take a little vacation from your art. And again, that's said with, you know, a star next to it because for some people that can be the direct opposite of what they need. And that brings me to point number eight, which again could be controversial. We'll see. So point number eight is force yourself through it. <laughs> tough love everybody <laughs> sometimes you need to just force yourself through it sometimes when you don't feel like creating art you're procrastinating or being lazy <laughs> and you know we all have that sometimes I'm not judging anybody I have that too but sometimes you need to just say okay I'm gonna go to Unsplash or Pexels or whatever and just flip through until something sparks my interest and I'm going to do a quick sketch or a study or whatever and I'm going to do that every day for however long it takes until I start to feel excited again. Sometimes, you guys, we just need to do that. We just have to push ourselves. Again, this is with a star because if you've been pushing yourself for a really long time and you're extremely burnt out and on the verge of some sort of mental, physical, or emotional collapse, then you need to go back to step seven, which was take a vacation from your art. So those two steps, you really have to be aware of how you're feeling and what's going on in your life and where you are mentally and emotionally, and you really have to be honest with yourself and decide which of those two you need to be doing. So you guys, if you want to join me over on my Patreon, we're having a lot of fun over there. We're doing the sketchbook club every month. So um, every month has a theme and we're doing three prompts a week uh, for each theme. And we have a fun Discord group. We do have a Facebook group too, but it's not super active. But the Discord group is super active where we all talk about um, our art and books that inspire us. And we share photos of our artwork and we get to know each other. And it's a really great, supportive um, welcoming community. Quite a few of us have chronic illnesses that we're dealing with, so we're supportive of each other. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. If you'd like to come join that, the link will be down below. It's at the four level, four dollar level tier on my Patreon. Um, you also will get four reference photos each month that I take myself. They're usually nature inspired that you can use in your art copyright free. Uh, and when I have time, <laughs> I do also put up some exclusive tutorials over there. So if you'd like to come and check us out, uh, we'd love to have you. Also, if you haven't hit the like and subscribe button yet, please do so. It really does help my channel out a lot. It helps you to realize that this is quality content and not, you know, 
some weird random clickbait thing um, and it will realize that people like the video and it, they will show it to other people which helps my channel. All right, you guys, I hope you're having a great week. Uh, until next time, happy creating. Mm -hmm.